Hello, everybody, and welcome to worship. It is good to at least be with you, if not in physical space. Uh, however, we're gathering together. Uh, we have people who are listening on the radio. We also have people who are uh, watching and listening from the, their own screen. Uh, before we begin, just want to make a couple of announcements so everyone's on the same page. Uh, the biggest thing we're concerned about right now as a church is trying to keep keep people connected to one another. Uh, so a couple of endeavors we are doing to help that goal. Uh, one, we have a calling list, which means everybody in the church should be uh, receiving a phone call in the next week or so. Uh, it doesn't have to be a long conversation, it's more of a mental health check. If there is something you need that the church can provide, please let the person who is calling uh, know about that. Our Sunday school youth, uh, some of them are looking to write letters to some of our shut-ins and people who are not able to be out in the community. Likewise, our Sunday school teachers are writing letters in order to reach out to our young people. We do have daily videos who are coming out, so if you're not uh, aware of that, you can see those all at unitedlutheranchurch.com, or you can check out the church's website, or excuse me, Facebook page. And last but not least, uh, we've been asked a great deal about uh, how we can continue with our food ministries, specifically our Wednesday night program. Right now, those uh, need to be suspended. Uh, what we're instead doing is we are in contact with the food ministries in the community, whether it's at the school, uh, uh, Meals on Wheels. If there are opportunities, if they need more volunteers, they know that they can reach out to United Lutheran and we can provide that. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to let you know that we do have confirmation is starting again this Wednesday. We're doing it in a much different way. Uh, obviously, we can't gather together, so we're going to be meeting virtually. Uh, Amanda, our Director of Youth and Family Ministry, is going to be sending out an email to everyone with a Zoom link uh, so that they can we can be together as small groups. Again, that's about all we have for announcements right now. Uh, today we have the Holy Evening Prayer Service. We're going to be uh, going through, and so thank you for Scott, Tricia, Gretchen, and Lisa uh, for leading us. We've got uh, Ken, who's recording on the radio. Jenny is the director running the camera, and Amanda just finished her children's sermon that we're going to be broadcasting later. So again, thank you all for your leadership.
just have a simple verse to share with you today. It is from the book of 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Elijah said, It is enough. It is enough, O Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. But suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Elijah, get up and eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Elijah is melting down. When we meet him in the 19th chapter of the book of 1 Kings, Elijah is melting down. And this, this is unique. When we first meet uh, the prophet Elijah, he is truly one of the strongest, most courageous people we encounter in all of Scripture. Uh, for one, he has a showdown with King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Stands up to them when no one else will. When the prophets of Baal or Baal are, are running the community, Elijah is the one prophet who stands up to them. He has risked his life over and over and over again. He is strong. He is courageous. He demonstrates perseverance over and over again, except in the 19th chapter. By the time we get to the 19th chapter, for reasons we are not told, he just cannot handle it anymore. Queen Jezebel threatens his life. This is nothing new. People have been threatening his life, including the king and queen, since the very beginning of the Elijah narrative. Maybe it's the cumulative effect. Maybe it's just been too many days living with this stress, with this anxiety, but Elijah melts down. For the first time in the book of 1 Kings, Elijah loses it. He runs away. He literally runs as far away as he possibly can and still remains in the corner of the promised land. And after he is there, he finds this big solitary tree, and then he throws himself on the ground. As if that's not dramatic enough, he looks up to the sky and he says, It is enough. It is enough. Oh Lord, take my life. It is enough. Elijah is melting down. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, he's had enough. And now, now, I'm guessing this is probably one of those stories that, frankly, Elijah wishes did not show up in the Bible. I mean, it's kind of this embarrassing scene, isn't it? Him just beneath the tree, having his little own pity party. It's, it's embarrassing. And yet, at least for me, frankly, I'm thankful today that this scene exists in the Bible. It feels good for me to know that there are people, even strong, courageous prophets like Elijah, who have those moments where they feel like they are melting down. Because I think if we're honest with ourselves, I think most of us, in the midst of this uncertain situation, are having moments. If not days, if not weeks, we're at least having little moments. I'll tell you one of mine. I have been social distancing, so please don't judge me. I have been doing a good job staying away from people, but yesterday I needed to go to the store. So I went to the store and I needed to pick up a couple of little things, but mostly I needed to pick up a couple of art supplies. Otherwise my daughter was going to drive the rest of us crazy. So I was going to pick up some art supplies, the things for her to do, and if you've been to Target, you will know Easter candy is out. And there is this moment. <laughs> And I'm not proud of this, but I looked at the Easter candy, and I felt this growing anxiety in me, and I had this mental image of taking multiple carts and loading up hundreds of dollars worth of Easter candy to take home and to store in my house. And the off chance that if things go really bad and the world runs out of food, at least I can survive on chocolate. <laughs> now, now, if that sounds insane, you're right. It, that's the dumbest idea. Unless you are named Charlie or Willy Wonka, there's no way you can live on just chocolate. And yet, in that moment, my brain was saying, do this, do this. I realized in that moment, I was melting down. We are having these little moments when we are melting down, when our brains are, are not working. And I think that comes out in a variety of ways, right? It could be the anxiety of what is to come health-wise. It is fearful of jobs. It is when we feel sadness or anger or frustration coming out towards our loved ones and then we 
which case we feel guilty about that. There's the social isolation that some people are feeling. There's a host of reasons that are leading us to this, but there are moments that we are melting down. And here's, here's why I read this story to you today. It is because when this is happening to us, you're in good company. Notice what God does for Elijah. Remember, Elijah is on the ground. He is, he is melting down. He thinks it's over for him. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appears. God shows up. God shows up to the prophet Elijah and says, Elijah, get up and eat. And Elijah will barely open his eyes. Life is so tough, but when he does, he sees a cake and he sees a jar of water. Now, if you don't know the Elijah story, you won't know why this is so significant. You see the cake? There was a previous story where Elijah was involved with a widow and her dead son. And he raised him to new life, or rather God raised the son to new life through the prophet Elijah. She made a cake. When Elijah sees that cake, it helps him recall the promise of God to be with him. When he sees the water, it reminds him of the prophets of Baal, where the water was poured out jar after jar. When he sees this, it helps him recall the promise of God and remember the faithfulness of God. That's what he sees. So when Elijah gets up, he eats the bread, or he eats the cake, he drinks the water, and then Elijah rests. He goes to sleep, and suddenly the angel, after a few hours, shows up once again, taps him on the shoulder and says, Elijah, get up and eat, or otherwise the journey will be too much for you. When Elijah opens his eyes, there's more cake. There's more cake to eat, and there's more water to drink. So Elijah gets up. He eats and he drinks, and through this, recalling the promise of God, remembering the faithfulness of God, he has the strength to go ahead for the journey that God has in store for him. People of God, the lesson of Elijah is threefold, and every one of those points is important. What do we do today? We rest, we recall the promise of God, and we remember the faithfulness of God. Rest. There's a thousand different ways we can be resting now. Physically, just take a nap. And I don't usually say that on a Sunday morning worship service because about three quarters of the people are sleeping anyway. But, but this day, you can just rest. Take a nap. Or take a break from the news. Take a break from social media. Take a rest from all the things that are bringing you anxiety. You can go back to bed later. But take a rest. Spend time reading a book or watching that old movie that gives you comfort or petting the dog, or hanging out with the kids, or hang out with the dog and pet the kids. Whatever it is that brings you rest, just, just do that. Rest. That's what Elijah did. He rested. And then, when it's time, get up and eat. When you wake up from that, from that nap, or you stand up from that movie, you don't have to eat cake or drink water, but you're invited to recall the promise of God promise of God for you this day is this, that I am with you, that I am with you in good times and bad. That is the promise made by Jesus Christ himself, and remember God's faithfulness, that God is with us in life and in death, and in every space in between, God promises to be with us, and he is faithful to his promises. If we do those things, if we rest, if we recall the promise of God, if we remember God's faithfulness, that gives us the strength to meet the days ahead. And the strength we need to meet the days ahead is for that journey. And while all of our journeys look very different, I'm guessing that all of them look strikingly similar. Our journeys are finding a new schedule. Our journey includes figuring out new ways to love our neighbors. And most of all, our journey includes figuring out ways to love those closest to us to the best of our abilities. That's the journey we have been called to. But in order to do that, in order to do that, to stop melting down, we need to rest, recall the faithfulness of God, and remember God's promise. May we do just that.
that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the, and the darkness, darkness has not overcome it.
gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.